everyone. So we're going to continue on with the theme for January and it is Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Here's the snow here. We talked about this last week and I think it's an important lesson for the whole month of January. January reminds me of snow, although I don't get it anymore where I am. I like it. And I like how beautiful and clean it looks. And that's what I want to be before the Lord. Beautiful and clean. So that's our goal, to think and ponder and study ways to become beautiful and clean for the Lord. Okay, so let's get started on our lesson. And our lesson this week is King David Repents. Even kings have to repent, everyone. Because remember last week's verse, one of the verses we said? We said it twice, if I remember correctly. Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not just one or two people, but all. So everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not just me, not just you, not just the person next door. Everybody. Everybody has sinned. The only sinless person that ever walked the earth, Jesus. So let's see how we can clean ourselves up and what King David did to clean himself up. All right. All right. So this week we will be talking about King David and the writer of our memory verse. All right, so King David wrote our memory verse. King David wrote that. So he needed cleansing from something. Oops, sorry. So he needed it. So kings, queens, you, me, even pastors and preachers and priests, everyone, no matter who you are, only Jesus being part of God is perfect. Everybody else, we have sin. All right, so let's see what happens here and, and if David repents. When I read this, it made me think about what happened in, in his life it, to cause him so dirty before God. We talked about that last week. Our lesson is found in 2 Samuel 11, verses 1 through 12. So here and here. The passage starts out with David. He has fought a lot of battles, and so instead of going to battle, this time he is sending Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and David stays in Jerusalem. He doesn't go with his men. To me, a true leader is one that leads, shows the example of leading. One evening, while David's home and all of his men are fighting, David arose from his bed and walked on his roof. I made a little picture I took a picture off the internet of David's castle and uh, tried to make it. Mine is very simple. And this is uh, right here is David on there, on top of his roof. Now, when he's on top of the roof, he can see over the city. And back then, they didn't have bathrooms like we do, where you can take a shower inside. A lot of times, it was a curtained off area, and they could have water brought up, and, or water that was there, and then they could take a bath up there. And there should be in private with curtains all around you. Let's see. So I'll leave the picture up where I read. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. Now, should he be looking? Hmm. 
Now, David already has more than one wife. In those days, kings married princesses from their uh, from other come hmm, from other countries as part of a peacekeeping contracts. Remember, his first wife was wife was Saul's daughter. Should King David, a married man, be watching a woman bathe? Should this woman be bathing where other people can see her? No. Let's continue King David. Let's continue. King David asks about this woman and is told that this is Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. So she's married too. Alright. Put that down. When when King David finds out she is married, he should have stopped thinking about her and talked to God to, to help him not to look at other women. Let's go and see what King David chooses to do. King David sends a messenger and took her and she went in unto him. Did she make did she make the right choice? Uh -uh. She should have said, I'm married and my husband is fighting a battle for you. I need to stay at home. She did make, did she make the right choice? Well, she is now going to have a baby. So no, she didn't make the right choice. And the right thing to do would have been to confess what had happened? Let's see what Bathsheba does. What David and Bathsheba do. King David sends for Uriah. Here's this picture. Asking him how the battle was going. And then tells him to go home and to get cleaned up. Uriah decides not to because the other soldiers can't, so he's not going to. So David tells him to stay in Jerusalem a day and leave tomorrow. David calls him to come eat with him. The next morning he sent a letter to Joab by Uriah's hand. Uriah delivers it. And it says to put Uriah in the front of the hottest battle. Why do you think he did that? Do you think it's because he wants Uriah to be safe and taken care of? Hmm. We can put this down now. Joab does what he is told to do. Your battle. Uriah goes to the hottest battle and he dies. Why do you think David sent him there? He wanted to cover up his sin. And in doing so, Uriah lost his life. It seems kind of mean, doesn't it? And underhanded. How sad that Uriah had to go through that because King David and Bathsheba sinned. It was their sin, not his. He was doing what was right. Well, Bathsheba goes through her mourning time, and once she is done her mourning, David sends for her and marries her, and she gave birth to a son. The thing David had done displeased the Lord. I would say it would. And he sends Nathan to talk to David. Nathan tells David about two men, one rich and one poor. The rich man had a lot of sheep and the poor man had one sheep. The rich man took the poor man's one sheep to feed a guest instead of using one of his own sheep. This made David very angry. 
and said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Did he have pity for Uriah? Mm. And Nathan said to David, Thou art this man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives, into thy bosom, and gave thee the son of Israel, Oh, gave thee the house of Israel and Judah, and if, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given thee such and such things. He's saying, the Lord's saying, I have blessed you so much and given you so much, and if it wasn't enough, you should have came to me and said, I, I need or I want. And he's, the Lord said, I would have gave it to you. But he didn't. He just took. And he took from another man. Wherefore thou hast despised the covenant, commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. He stole. He stole Uriah's wife. He stole Uriah's life. And he had tons of stuff. He had a lot of wives. And he's still alive. Yet he took Uriah's life and his wife. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart thee from thy house, because thou hast despised me. When you do bad things, you will get a punishment. And it's rightly so. We should find ways, especially ways by talking to God about stuff prevent ourselves from doing bad things, resist, and has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. Even his own home is going to have evil. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes. Big thing he's done wrong. And give them unto thy neighbor, for thou didst secretly, and I will do this thing before all Israel. He's bringing out the sin in front of everyone and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And this is when Psalms 51 was written for a memory verse. Verse one starts with a cry from David for mercy. Let's all say our memory verse together. Psalms 57, one. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. David's regretting what he did. Sometimes we go about life and we don't think about what we're doing. We need to try to be mindful of what we're doing because otherwise it can cause a lot of grief, not only on ourselves, but everyone around us. David had sinned. He fell into temptation and sinned and it displeased God and hurt others because of it. But when Nathan came to him and told him about it, he repented. That's the example of what we should be doing. We should repent when we 
we sin. Just like we talk about, we talked about last week, we need to confess to God. He admitted to God he had sinned and asked for mercy. That was our memory verse in Psalms 57. And let's go there. Psalms is about the middle of the Bible. So it makes it a little bit easier to find. And it's a big book. So Psalms 57. And we'll read verse 1. This is the beginning of him being sorry to the Lord. And repenting. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. He's feeling bad. He realized how bad, how bad he had been, how wrong it was for him to do the things he did. Just like in last week, we read 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, like David did, he being God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm grateful that God is so merciful to us, aren't you? The next verse in 1 John, verse 10, goes on to say, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, being God, a liar, and his word is not in us. So if you're saying that, oh, I'm okay, I don't sin, I'm a good person, then you're lying, because we all have sinned. Sometimes it may be just small things, but it is sin. King David loved God, but he messed up, just like all of us. And then Nathan told him about it. Nathan talking to David from God. David having God's word in him because he memorized it and read it and studied it, realized, oh no, Lord, what have I done? No pleasure on earth is worth being separated from God, no matter what. Having the Lord upset with us is the worst thing ever and he needed to repent just like we do when we mess up if David had reacted in a way that would have shown that David loved himself more than he loved his creator who gave him life that would have been sad Today, a lot of people think their, their ugliness doesn't count. They deserve to be ugly, or they have the right to be ugly. No one does. We all should be kind and wonderful and be nice to one another. Just like God is to us. This week, let's all try to stop and think before we make choices. Just like last week we saw and we started putting the snowballs on and we saw there are ugly snowballs, dirty snowballs and clean snowballs. Let's make it a goal. Stop and think and only do things where you can put a clean snowball on your snowman. If we just make good choices, this would be something that God would be pleased with and be happy with. 
If not, ask God to help us to resist these temptations. In Matthew 6, 9-15, would be a good place to read with the whole family together. And to think about and ponder on. So this week's little activity, I have a little thing like this that you can make. And what it says is trust God. And if you put it like this, it'll stand up on your chest or drawers or buffet or wherever you want to do it. If you want to do it as a family, you can have each child decorate one or two of the snowmen, and you do as well. And then what I do is, when I make arts and crafts for the kids, and I cut things out, I use the extra bits of paper around it to make extra squares or rectangles for the little project. And then I keep them, and then when we do it, the project again, we have them. Because it takes quite a bit. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight of these uh, rectangles. And what these little snowmen, and I put the letters, trust God, trust him, trust him with your life, trust him to take care of you, trust him to help you make the right choices. And then, when you're done that one, you can do, and I've got it so that you can see down, Jesus saves. That's another good one you could make with the little snowman. And all you have to do is make snowmen, put the letters in it to spell out what you want, and then make it. And have it out so all month long for the month of January, you can see it and you can remember, trust God, do things that are pleasing to God. Keep our snowman white, not muddy, dirty snowballs, but clean snowballs. And you will have a better life, a more wonderful life. Remember, when we make mistakes, and we all do, I do too, Everybody does, no matter what you are. The most fancy person in the world to the least fancy person in the world. And everyone in between. You go to God and you say, Lord, I've... And spill out whatever it was to the Lord. Cry out to Him for forgiveness. And He will do it. Because He loves you. Well, that's it for this week, and I hope you had a fun time. I hope you did your craft with me, uh, or will be doing it, and you enjoyed this time together. Try to keep your snowman clean. All right, God bless you guys. Bye-bye.